You keep crying. He'll keep wiping. Don't laugh at the man of God because he's crying. Because if your husband starts crying, you need to know what to do with it. You better go anoint him in the name of Jesus. You better prophesy to him in Jesus' name. You ain't got that all that word up in you to keep it to yourself. You better speak and bind that devil off of his life in the name of Jesus. I command every husband that's not in a position to come back to the house of God. Every son that's not in a position, come back home. Every man that's in jail, away from his family, come back home. Because you got a friend in Jesus. And that you can't do it But say hello to what? My little friend I got a friend in Jesus And every time I keep crying He keeps on wiping my face Every time I want to give up He keeps picking me up Every time I want to quit He keeps on holding me Every time I want to die He brings life back into me Jesus will give you CPR I want to give up God But Jesus kept breathing life into you gonna let you die. He's not gonna let you give up. He'll keep <laughs> until you wake up. He'll keep breathing until you wake up. <laughs> Come on, baby. I got to work for you. I got a destiny. Come on, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk out. Don't quit. I don't care what happened. I don't care who said what. You better not give up on nobody. You better not give up on nobody. I don't care how far they out there. Don't give up on them. God ain't give up on nobody in this building. He ain't give up on you. 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 He ain't give up on you or your husband. When that devil come up, woman of God, I'm coming to you. When that devil come up, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. When that devil come up, you better get some moxie on. You better open your mouth and speak to that devil. Because you got power of life and death in your tongue. You better say that thing. You better say a couple words. I don't know a whole bunch of scriptures, but say hello to my little friend. This guy standing behind me, that's what John said. John said, I'm not, I'm not worthy, but the one who comes after me, the one who comes after me, that's what he said, my man. John said, I can't do it, but the one who comes after me, I can't even tie his shoes. Say hello to my little friend. Sin, when you try to pop up in my life, you better say hello to my little friend. Because this guy behind me, he ain't playing no games. He come to destroy the works of the flesh. Sin, doubt, fear, unbelief. Jesus ain't going to let you die. I'm telling you, Jesus will breathe life into you. Yes. Yes. I don't care what they say about you. Don't care. What a woman of God at. I told you if you got somewhere to go. Come on, Pastor. Be thou removed. He said it, not me. <laughs> Y'all got somewhere to go? Let me speak to you, woman of God. You serve a God. That's going to reveal himself like never before in your life. Let me tell you something. Every time you get the itch, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. You will not be tormented. Get the oil. Somebody get the oil. Come on, this ain't no show. Y'all need to be praying. Y'all need to stop moving, no moving, no gossip. No, this is not showtime. This is a time for deliverance. God wants to bring healing to his children. And all that moving around, if you got somewhere to go, please, please. But if you need healing, God wants to send a word to you. I want you to anoint her. This is my wife. Yeah, put it all on there. That's right. Don't worry about it. Let me speak to you right now, woman of God. Child. God said you've been trying it your way and you've been putting on a good show I mean you do it well 
Because you don't look like what you've been through. But you've been through something. Oh, you better talk to me now. You've been through something. And God said if you would just relinquish your life unto him and surrender and give it all up. And I'm telling you, it ain't going to be easy because I'm telling you, when people let you down and when they hurt you, when they say evil against you, they don't believe in you more. That hurts like never before. But you serve a friend in Jesus. You got somebody who will not let you fail, woman of God. And I'm telling you right now, there's not by chance that you're in the building today. God wants your heart today. God wants your spirit today. God wants you to begin to surrender today and tell those things that are against the word of God in your life and around your life. There's some things happening around you that's trying to get you to move, but I'm telling you right now, if you know Jesus, you won't move. David said, I shall not be moved. I'm speaking to your heart right now. You might not say that, but I can feel it right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you would strengthen the woman of God. I pray right now, God, that you would give her the anointing, Father God, that she, Father God, would dip in the spiritual river Jordan, that when you come up, that you're going to be washed white as snow, that you're going to be healed, and you're going to be delivered from every pain that's hidden and hide behind the smile. You got some pain hiding behind the smile. You got disappointment hiding behind the smile. You got a little bit of anger hiding behind the smile. You got some questions hiding behind the smile. But I'm telling you that God knows everything. He says, I know what, what you're going to say before you ever say it. The book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 30 he says that while you are yet speaking he said I have already seen what you need I'm telling you right now Isaiah 65 and 21 God said while you're speaking I already know what you need I'm telling you right now just start opening up your mouth and start speaking to God stop speaking to people for a second and start speaking to God you got to take this thing right up to the, the, the chain of command God wants you to go right to him woman of God I speak it right now no longer will you have to fake it till you make it no you're going to get down worse God in spirit and in truth because God says in my word that those are going to be a time and a season where my worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. God wants you want you to get comfortable just worshiping him because that's what's going to carry you through this moment, this season that you're in. You're in a season of being torn. You're in a season. I see living situations getting ready to change. I see living situations being kind of in limbo. What I'm telling you right now, God says those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, they're going to abide under God's shadow. I will proclaim that you would abide under the shadow of God. I want to speak that word to you. Because I, I know you're holding it back, but I'm going to let the, I'm gonna let somebody pray and hug on you and love up on you. And it's the love that covers the fear. I can see it all in your belly. But God loves you, so he doesn't matter what you came in with. He don't want you to leave out with it. He said, drop it. Drop the baggage. Is that your bag on the floor? Why is it on the floor? Because you don't need it in your hands. God said, no more baggage in your hands. No more baggage in your hand. No more baggage in your Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. You can go ahead and cry. That's cool. Every time you cry, God will keep on wiping it. That's all right. Drop it. Drop it. See, love is the one that makes you feel comfortable. You can't preach without love. Amen. You got to preach the love of Christ. Amen. That no matter what you did, Amen. Marvin Sapp said, it don't matter what I did. It don't matter what I did. It don't matter what I did. It don't matter. Because he loves us. Thank you, Lord. If you don't know Jesus, or you need to rededicate your life to him, when I walked in this building, the man of God said it was so heavy, heavy, but God died for the heaviness. Don't walk out heavy. Don't walk out heavy. If you just want to come up and let us touch and agree with you, come on up. We got ministers all over. Just raise your hand and we come to you. We'll send somebody over there to you. If you need to rededicate your life. Amen. When I say rededicate, I, I don't mean that little churchy stuff. 
Amen. I'm talking about you serious. Amen. You serious. Amen. You need God more than you need everything else. Amen. Lord, I rededicate my life right now because I need you more than I need everything else. I'm not, I'm not playing. I need him. I need him. It's him that keeps me. In him do I move and have my what? My being. I'm nothing without you. It's in him that I move and live. I rededicate my life right now, God. Every thought and idea that's not of you, God, I rededicate it right now. So if you want to feel comfortable, I just did it too. I just did it too. I just did it too. And if you need a church home that is going to love on you, not some place you go to church. Uh-uh, I don't want that. I don't want this to be known as that place. I want this to be a place where we just love on you. Amen. We hug you when you're hurt. We hug you when you're hurt. If you want a place that's going to hug you where you hurt, just raise your hand. Come up. Come up. Come up. Come on up. If you, if you want a place that's going to hug on you and love upon you, he said, my disciples shall be known by what? Love. Amen. Amen. pray for over the offering because we did not pray over it and oh. we went to testimony and you never want to just not pray over the offering Christina can you please pray for the offering Thank you, Lord God, for this offering, Lord, that you gave us, Lord, so that we can give back into the house, Lord. Thank I thank you, Lord, that our offering will be increased, Lord, a hundredfold, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for any area where it may seem like we're lacking, Lord, because we gave it up. I thank you, Lord, that you would fill that area right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to activate our faith in giving, Lord, and to show you our love by giving, Lord. Amen. We thank you so much, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to walk in obedience, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that this offering will go to exactly what it needs to go to, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that it will not return back void, Lord. I thank you, God, that your word says that you love a cheerful giver, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for you showing us your love, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Quick reminder, we have um, the dinner ready to go. I have a few packages. Just see, um, I believe Jester and Regina is already downstairs and ready to go, right? Huh? Upstairs, okay, I'm sorry. It is upstairs, so don't leave, please. Make sure you grab a, a dinner to go. It's Sunday, nobody will feel like cooking. Come on, I don't. Jesus. <laughs> so before we close, if you've been visiting this church a while and you want to make it your church home, you can raise your hand, we'll just walk to you and make sure I give you all the information. I thank God for all the testimony you have one for today. Testimony are very, very important because it's just there to encourage somebody else, to push somebody else. Those testimony was a lot of healing to it, a lot of just hope to hold on to it, to not give up. Amen. And I thank God for every testimony. Because I'm sure that somebody going to leave here and going to hold on to that hope and remind Yahweh, if you did it for her, you can do it for me. Amen. He loves us the same way. Amen. So just remind him that. I heard Christina's testimony. If you did it for her, you can do it for me. If you heal her children, you heal her finances. You can do it for me. Amen. So hold on to that. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify your name. Father, we magnify your name. Father, we thank you, Lord God, as we leave this place, Lord God, but we will never depart from your presence, Lord God. 
Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you will cover us, Lord God. When we get on our car, Lord God, that you will remove, Lord God, the accident, Lord God, the highway and the highway, Lord God. Father, remove, Lord God, the drunk driver, Lord God, the sleeping driver, Lord God, the careless driver on the road, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for keeping our mind, Lord God, for keeping our body away from any infirmity, Lord God, from any sickness, Lord God, doubt, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for covering our home, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for this fellowship, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are taking time, Lord God, to give, Lord God, all our problem, Lord God, all our doubt, Lord God, anything, Lord God, with pain, Lord God, the good and the bad, Lord God, that we give all to you, Lord God. Father, we glorify your name, we magnify your name, Lord God. Father, as we say thank you for being our life, for being a peacemaker, for being a healer, for being a provider. We glorify your name in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, 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 amen. Stay in man, stay in contact with all the young men in church, please. Ladies, please stay in contact with each other. Don't just stop when you leave the service today to Sunday again. Please make sure you, you gotta get comfortable to call somebody. Yes. You know what? Don't always get comfortable to somebody's always calling you. Yes. You have to start calling Come other on. people. It's not always somebody's always calling you. You always the one always receiving the call. But you need to now start dialing the number and call somebody. Speak life over them. Encourage them and just keep them. Just say a word of prayer. Just send them like just hey, I just pray to you have a wonderful day today. It don't have to be much, but you have to get comfortable with that to just exercise your faith. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful Sunday. Amen. Uh, amen. Antoine, you came up for an article? It's okay. I Come mean, over. Please. I didn't see you. Please, I apologize. It's all right. Please. It's all right. Come on, Antoine. Amen. <laughs> Come on, DJ. Come on, DJ. That's Joshua. DJ. From the Battle of the Jericho. <laughs> Joshua. I'm already doing the offer. I'm laughing. Put the offering there. Come on over. Amen. 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 But, but, but God said, when you see that thing, I want you to remember that those things are severed for a reason. 
God said, I'm severing those things for a reason that now you've got the mind of Christ, the understanding of the power of Christ, the understanding of his anointing and why he died. And God said, because those things have been shattered, because they've been severed, because they've been broken, he said, I'll never allow them to re reattach. They shall be severed forever. They shall be broken forever. And God said, don't worry, you don't have to go back. Even though you may know some people and we integrate the people of your faith, you will not go back to that place. You will not go back to that place. You will not go back to that place. God said you will not go back to that place. Be confident that you will never go back to that place. Don't worry even when you see the visitation. God said there's some things that are trying to visit you and come back from your past. People coming back. Old memories coming back. Old things coming back. Old items and, 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 and trinkets and familiar spirits coming back. But God said you don't worry. You'll never go back to that thing. You may revisit it. You may see uh, uh, familiar things. That, but God said you're not going back. You're not going back. This season, God said, that season of separation is coming. God said, it's that season. You're it. It's that season of separation and strategy that God has now prepared you for. Because now God said, all of that was training. And now it's starting to employ what you've been learning, employ what you've been studying. God said, now is the time for those things to be activated. Now it's time for those things to be uh, 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 worked into the game plan now. Now is a new season now. Now is a season of doing it. Now is a season of crossing the white line. Now is a season of stepping onto the court. Practice is over. God said, now is the season where you're going to see the manifestation of your study come to life. And God said, it's theirs so that you might have confidence that you can do this thing. That you can have confidence that you can do. You, you're not going to walk out anymore. The spirit of you walking out and just quitting, that spirit is over. That spirit is dead. That spirit is not coming back anymore, man of God. You're not going to start walking out all the way you used to. You're not going to quit the way you used to. You're not going to be able to sever tie the way you used to. God said, I've broken the chain. I've severed the chain. He said, you'll just watch it break. Yes. You just watch it break. Yes. You just watch it break. There it go right there. God said, you just watch it break. He said, I've severed it. But you just watch it break. You just watch it lay dormant on the ground. You just watch it. Just stand still and know that I am God in your life. You ain't going to go back. Stop more about commitment because you're going to be able to stay committed. You're going to be able to stay consistent in the name of Jesus. Yes, you don't have to worry about uh, going back and forth. You know all the lukewarm. You're going to be the man of God, faithful, committed, consistent, and obedient what God says. He said, no longer will you fear commitment. You won't fear it because I am in your life. I'm coming after you. I'm the one. Move out the way and let me get in the way in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, you've never seen a commitment in your life. But I'm telling you today that God says you will make a commitment. You will be able to make a commitment, man of God, by hook or crook. God is going to bring you to a yes, place he of is. consistency. Come on. And when that business opportunity didn't work, it tried to shatter your confidence. But God said, you just got to regroup and reorganize. You just got to reshuffle the deck. You just got to shuffle the cards again. He said, don't worry about it. He said, I am going to order every one of your steps. A righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, you will no longer fear commitment, son. You will no longer fear it because God will teach you how to be consistent in commitment. But because you've never seen it, you never know how. But God said, now I'm showing you. Now I'm showing you. And I'm going to continue to unveil the words to you. That you might have confidence that you can do it. That you can have confidence. No more hearing doubt, but you only hear the faith. He said, I've sent preachers. How can they have a preacher unless he be sent? God said, I've given you a pastor after his own heart. That knows exactly what you need. That's why you fit in. That's why it works so well. Because God knew exactly what you needed. And he knew that you had a desire to have family. And you had a desire to have fellowship. And God says, I'm bringing it all back to you. This is going to be a fight. They're not going to let you go easy. They're not going to let you walk away easy. They're going to call all manner of evil against you. They're going to start calling you all kind of names and bringing up your past again. That's going to happen again, man of God. That's going to happen. But God said in the book of Numbers, he said, all those that follow the word are alive 
until this day. You're not a scratch. The plague will not touch you. The spiritual plague will not touch you. The emotional plague will not touch you. Those word seeds will not touch you because you're covered by the Passover. That's what God says in his word. 